I mean, Salesforce is a, is a fantastic tool, but it does suffer from some uh, nuances, shall we say. The, uh, the loading and extracting of data is not necessarily uh, its strong suit. Uh, Third-party app integration, if I've got to get data from other places, uh, that can be a bit tricky. It requires a, maybe a consultant or a third-party application or a whole bunch of Apex coding. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for, as we talked about before, about uh, invalid or missing data or that data quality or data cleansing. And it really doesn't help with the uh, sort of <laughs> the user UI. There's hundreds of tabs, millions of fields. Um, you know, it can be quite inefficient. So that's our our message for the for the show: connecting, cleansing, securing. Uh, uh, be confident securing the data, and it's going to be complete on any app or any device. And um, how do we do that? We have a portfolio of tools, as we've mentioned. We've seen a couple already. Um, and we're going to see a few more today. Uh, they're it, on on the whole uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, in many cases, no hand coding. Uh, we have, you know, our, our legacy is that broad connectivity, so that uh, permeates. And of course, we have 2,500, uh, uh, over 2,500 customers, many of them Salesforce customers, uh, doing this stuff already. So, with that in mind, there's a lot of things I could show, um, but but we'll see how some of those problems manifest, right? If I'm a a salesperson and the majority of uh, the folks attending Dreamforce will um, be those kind of business cum users, the the sort of Salesforce admins. Um, so so not necessarily highly technical folks. Um, so let, let's go through a, a scenario that they're they're very familiar with. You know, sort of using Salesforce from inside sales. Um, and of course, in many instances, the, the will follow this uh, sales workflow at the beginning from uh, uh, from the viewpoint of a call band, right? So it's a thing salespeople, uh, or not just salespeople, in fact, anybody that's in a call center scenario. So whether it's uh, support calls or whether it's inside sales or account reps um, or even marketing folks, uh, will do this. Our job is to call folks and make sales. And I mean, that's that's... You know, let's be honest, that's the end of the day, what, what we're trying to do. So in many instances, we get a, a call sheet. Uh, it could be a spreadsheet. It could be an extract from something like Marketo. It could be um, a list that we've purchased and we haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, and it says, hey, uh, Bob or Susie, uh, your job is to make 80 calls a day, call down the list. Uh, so now we're into managing spreadsheets for, for, our, for our salespeople. That's, that's not necessarily optimal. Um, you know, if I'm looking on the spreadsheet, perhaps the spreadsheet's not complete, right? The extract didn't contain the name or the first name. It just had the last name. Uh, it, you know, that's not very professional, uh, not very useful. Uh, so, and again, the salespeople do a lot of these things that they create the, the record inside of Salesforce. So, you know, your job is to take it from, manu from the spreadsheet, manually enter it into Salesforce. And of course, if you don't have all the information, then the Salesforce record is going to be inaccurate. And then, of course, you make your sales call. Um, but what do you say? What's the sales play? What, what's my call script? Um, you know, maybe I've got a, a, a sheet or a quick card or a, um, a call script itself. Uh, but again, I've got to manually uh, manage all that sort of stuff. And then if by any uh, op you know, sort of chance I make a sale... And I, create, I have to create the opportunity record in Salesforce. How do I go about that? And it's, you know, it's totally isolated in Salesforce, right? It's not really connecting to anything else. And I'm, I mean, you know, that has further implications downstream. Not only is it time-consuming to go all these things, but in every stage there's an error or, or, or uh, an inefficiency and that affects, you know, ultimately at the end of the day that all of those downstream processes, so the product won't ship. So we're going to do a, um, a better Salesforce workflow. Um, we're actually uh, going to use a fictitious company called Sale Food Distribution. Uh, I'm going to perform the um, I'm going to be the, the inside sales rep performing this uh, um, activity, and I'm going to use Informatica Cloud embedded inside the Salesforce 
um, to make that uh, great customer data have a good user experience. So here I go. I'm going to log into Salesforce as the as the sales rep. And you'll see, actually, uh, we've, we've completely configured this Salesforce environment. You know, I've got the, the user, uh, the fictitious company's logo at the top. I've called them Wholesale Food. Um, uh, my job is to, uh, as I said, make calls and make sales. So I'm going to look at uh, a company I'm targeting, a home and catering. And uh, I can see that uh, uh, the contact I need to call in fact, there's only two contacts on this on this record, so that's the first thing I need to do. Is instead of you know managing all those spreadsheets, why don't I why don't I load the data from a spreadsheet? So um, we've made it really easy here. We've uh, used uh, Informatica Cloud uh, to um, automate that to upload. So uh, I'm just going to quickly show you here that uh, you know I'm. I'm quickly clicking through. I'm using a couple of the components of Informatica Cloud. I'm using um, the, uh, for those that, uh, that are on the phone, we used to call this ICS, but it's Informatica Cloud uh, Data Integration. Um, and, and I'm actually running it in this uh, nice frame here, and that's the uh, Informatica Cloud Application Integration sort of component uh, that used to be called uh, Cloud Extend. So, that, that was pretty quick. It uploaded um, an, just a number of rows. Uh, if you don't believe me, let's um, click here. And, oh, it's taken me to the um, right uh, record that I want to go to. I can see now that my contacts are um, uploaded. So there was no uh, messing about with the spreadsheets or anything else like that. In fact, um, we, I uploaded more data than that, but... Um, I'm really interested in uh, just seeing the, the records on, on this particular um, uh, account. And as, my, as a sales rep, I know I've got to call Rose. So I'm going to call Rose. And um, right away, I've noticed something about Rose's record. So Rose's record actually has an other address that, uh, that we should be using for shipping. And I, and I see that... Um, Rose's address is empty. Uh, luckily for me, I know, um, I know where she is so I can go and find her. But I'm going to use uh, some sort of data quality that we have, and I'm going to put in the zip code, 94063. For those of you that are in Redwood City, you should, should know what that is. Um, oh, I'm going to 2000 for the building number. And we can see instantly that it's validating that address, uh, got the right address, and, and if I select it, it even knows that there's a number of buildings. So I'm going to pick the building one. And the nice thing is, it's, I didn't have to enter it, right? It's, it's put it in there for me. It saved, the, um, saved it on the contact. We know now that when Rose uh, makes her order that... Uh, now the product will be able to uh, ship to her. So how, how do we kind of like do that next step? How do we um, uh, talk to rows and how do I create the opportunity, uh, create the order as, as a sales rep? So I'm going to click the button here that, uh, again, now provides uh, a wizard-like interface for the sales rep to walk through. Uh, we can see that it's actually a call script here. We've got... Um, I've got the number at the top, so I know what number to dial. And I've got a little script to say, Hello, Rose. This is Clive from Wholesale Food. I thought you should know that we're running a special. How much would you like to buy? And uh, I don't give her the uh, option here to decline, so I'm going to uh, continue. And here, I'm now walking through and creating the opportunity. I'm not going through a long, long list of um, fields. Uh, I'm going to quickly... Fill in here, I'm going to say uh, best case, the stage, a proposal, a price quote, uh, all the default values here. Oh, and rather than just creating the opportunity, I've now also looked into another Salesforce instance. In fact, it's a service cloud instance 
to see if there are any issues with a Hona catering. Because, I mean, there's nothing worse than derailing a sales conversation with ha the customer having open issues. So uh, we see we've got some um, uh, issues with seafood orders. I could change the delivery date. Um, I could drill into these uh, cases, but I, but I won't for, for uh, brevity here. Oh, and the next thing is I don't want to accept an order that's in bad standing. So um, we've actually done a live lookup uh, to NetSuite, and NetSuite Finance says, well, actually, they're overdue, they're past due. Um, what should we do about that? Now, I could, I could follow on the, the guide here to, um, to resolve that finance issue, but for purposes of my demo, I'm just going to skip and um, assume that everything's going to be okay with Rose. Now I'm adding products to the opportunity. So, oh wow, um, the products list, again, doesn't reside in Salesforce. It resides somewhere else. In fact, it's an Oracle database that we have real-time access to. So, so let's see, um, a Hone and Catering is uh, uh, feeling particularly flush and they're going to buy, let's see, what do we have here? I think uh, lobster is here somewhere. Here we are. Live main lobster. We're going to select some of those and 500 pounds of lobster. And again, it's taking all of those values from Oracle, passing it into Salesforce, and putting it on the opportunity. Here we can we can see here, and it's even calculated the the right amount here. Well, let's add uh, some Lincod to. Let's add 100 pounds of that. Now we see it's, it's working in real time. It's added the, the card. And success. Well, fantastic. So I've created an opportunity for a Hone and Catering Group. I've um, reviewed cases to make sure from another Salesforce org. I've checked to make sure that the um, uh, finances are in good standing and I'm going to get paid. Uh, I've added the uh, products and order items to the opportunity itself. And um, that's all well and good. Now, it's going to take me to the um, opportunity, but uh, uh, Wholesale Food, their, um, their fulfillment system is SAP. So how, how can I get this fantastic order that I've just created here um, into SAP? Well, I'm going to actually close the stage, so we've won. I'm going to save that record. And now that's triggered a, a bulk upload between um, my uh, Salesforce system here and an SAP system that I have running too. So I've talked to NetSuite, I've talked to Oracle, I've um, done some data validation, and now if I uh, refresh you'll see that I've got my SAP order number. So I did a live uh, sync to SAP and it sent me some data back. So um, that's, a, that's a, a really, really complex workflow that I've really simplified using uh, Informatica Cloud tools. And you know, it's really, really easy for the sort of end user, those, those salespeople or, or customer support people or marketing folk to just follow those things along. So uh, that's my demo. And um, oh, I, you know what? You're going to say, hey, Clive, um, how do I know that you've done this for real? You, you told me there's Oracle, but you could have dummied up a page. You told me that there's um, uh, SAP. I mean, how do I really know? So I can actually log in to Informatica Cloud. You can see the monitor on the, on the timestamp. I've got these couple of items at the top here. I've got the sync, which is in fact the, the very first thing I did where I just clicked and I loaded the data. And I'll just give you proof here. I went from a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet to Salesforce, and here's how the fields that were mapped. And um, that did that in, uh, again, in, in real time when I clicked the button. And then here is the SAP to opportunity um, mapping, 
that we had before. So I've got my opportunity. We did a BAPI call in SAP, and it sent the result also back to uh, Salesforce. So that's how I got my um, that's how I got my SAP order number. We fixed those common problems, right? We've loaded and extracted data. We integrated with third-party applications with ease. So that's um, Oracle, SAP, NetSuite, uh, flat files. Uh, we fixed invalid or missing data. So that was um, the uh, address validation that we had there. And all of those things around user errors and inefficiency about multiple tabs and which fields to fill in, um, we didn't do any of that, right? We did that just following a wizard step by step by step. So again, all of those things come from Informatica Cloud. It's a complete portfolio of tools. They're extremely easy to use. In most cases, no hand coding, massive connectivity, and 2,500 customers totally agree.